about when we're talking about concentration, we're looking at uh, the mass of solute. So that's the stuff that's going to get dissolved into the mass of the final volume of the solution, right? We know that this doesn't just mean mass over volume. Because if we're looking at the mass of an object over its volume, that's density. Okay, so these, yes, this is still a mass and it's still a volume, but it's looking at a different, uh, it's looking at, at not necessarily the mass and volume of one object, it's looking at the mass and volume of the ingredients in a solution or a mixture, okay? And on the top of page 53 in your textbook, you know that there's more than one way to express concentration. And we're going to talk about what the different ways actually mean. Because it's entirely possible for you to get these different values on any form of assessment. So I don't want you to see this and be like, oh, I don't know what that even means. Okay? Because the concentration calculation is still, for the most part, going to be the same. All right? So... The, the most common form of concentration is in terms of units. Now, here we're looking at units. This little video is going to focus on the different units of concentration. The most common one that we've got is the grams per liter. And when we talk about grams per liter, we're talking about the mass of the solute, so that's the stuff that gets dissolved over the volume, and I mean final volume of the solution, right? SOL with a little N and a line, that's shorthand for solution. So if I have a solution of 100 milliliters, and I've determined that I've got to put in 5 grams of juice crystals, I'm not going to raise, I'm not going to add 100 milliliters of liquid to a beaker and then throw in my 5 grams of powder and stir because that throws off my final concentration. You add your solute first and then keep adding your water or, and most often the solvent is the water. You keep adding your solvent until it reaches that final volume you're looking for. And when that happens, you've got the right concentration that you need, okay? We also looked at yesterday that if you have, you know, a concentration of, let's say, 40 grams per liter, and you're only making, okay, 250 milliliters of this, we can figure out how to calculate how much of the, you know, 40 grams per liter you're going to need to put in if you want to have the exact same concentration in less. And this works for more water as well. Okay, we know that there's a problem here, though, when we look at this. We know that our volumes are not equal, right? Right? You cannot have milliliters and liters, so what do we do? We convert to liters. Everything's got to go back to liters, right? So how do I get 250 milliliters into liters? <clears throat> A thousand. So here, if I've got 250, and I'll just show you the math, milliliters... I'm going to multiply that by something to get rid of those milliliters and to end up with the unit I'm looking for. The unit I'm looking for is liters. So, in one liter, how many milliliters do I have? I've got a thousand milliliters. And interestingly enough, when I do this, look at that, my milliliters are going to cancel out because one is in the numerator and the other is in the denominator. So that ends up leaving me with the unit I want. Okay, this ends up being 0 0.25 liters. And if I go and I put that back in up here, 
So if I erase this, okay, and I add my 0 0.25 liters, I know that this is one liter, I can figure this out through cross multiplication. I can multiply this by this, this by this, and I will solve for my unknown amount of solute. And the same thing can be done if I'm given, the same thing can be done if I'm given, let's say, 2.5 liters instead of 0.25. Another way that you can actually get a concentration problem or the units that they're talking about is with percentages, okay? And this is a little bit different. So if I said that I had a concentration of, uh, let's say, 30% mass over volume, when you look at that, you're probably like, oh, what is that even saying? I have no idea how to make heads or tails of that. So here's a trick. Whenever you see a percentage like that, what does a percentage make you think it's out of? 100. So whenever you see this, if I told you that right now you had a 30% mass over volume solution, go next door in the chemistry lab and make me a 30% mass over volume solution of, I don't know, Kool-Aid. Do it now. Some of you would just be like, oh, I have no idea what she's talking about. Here's the trick. Every time you see percent mass over volume, percent volume over volume, and percent mass over mass, the same rule applies. Okay? You have to assume that the final volume here, and when they give you a V, they're talking about a liquid. When they give you an M in the denominator, they're talking about a solid. Okay? So in the case of this, it's in a liquid. So assume that you have a cylinder here, okay, and you've got 100 milliliters of liquid. 100 milliliters. If you see that you've got a mass, mass means what? Solid or liquid? Solid. Mass means solid. That means you are then going to have, okay, that many grams in 100 milliliters. So that would mean that your final volume is up to here, but inside this, you're going to have 30 grams of solid that gets dissolved into a final solution of 100 milliliters, not 100 liters. So if you then have to change this to liters, that's quite possible, okay? But when you see percent something over something, they're talking about it being over 100. They're talking about your final volume being 100. So the same thing goes if I've got percentage volume over volume. So if 100 is here, right, 100 milliliters, and I've got, let's say, 30, again, percent volume over volume. If we go back here, what does volume imply? It implies that you're playing with two liquids here. Okay, this one was a solid and a liquid, a solid in a liquid. If we've got a percentage volume over volume, we're looking at a liquid mixed into a liquid. Okay, and we see that all the time. All right, if you've got um, some kind of, you see that with um, syrup. Has anybody here ever, um, you get that quick syrup, that chocolatey syrup, and you add milk to it, so you're diluting it, right? But you're putting a liquid into another liquid, okay? It's a poor example, but you get my meaning. Now, what we mean here is if I say I've got 30 percent volume over volume, what I'm saying is 
that I've got 30% of one solution, okay, of my solute. So that's 30 milliliters of my solute, of my overall volume of 100 is going to be whatever my solute is. My final volume is still 100 milliliters, but 30% of that 100 milliliters is a liquid solute. And you'll mix them up and it'll give you your concentration, no problem, but that's what that means. Okay, whatever the percentage is, if it's 5% volume over volume or V over V, that means you're going to have 5 milliliters of solute mixed into a final volume of 100 milliliters. Okay? And the last one here is percentage mass over mass. Uh, that should be an M. Mass. So both solids. So if I've got, if I'm mixing... Um, like sit, right now, city streets are icy. So they're, they're, they're laying down a mixture of salt and sand. Okay, salt to help melt the ice, but sand to provide grip so you don't slide. Okay, so if I said that I was going to test out a small little sample of that, and I said I was going to make a solution of 15% per, mass over mass, that means... Um, let's say I was going to make a mixture of 15 grams of salt in 100 grams of total volume. What would the other 85% be if I was mixing salt here and I wanted a mixture of salt sand? How much sand would I have to get my 100? I'd have 85 grams of salt. Has anybody here ever made cinnamon sugar to put on your toast? Okay, it's delicious. You should try this. You mix a, an amount, you mix a portion of cinnamon with granulated sugar. And you mix them up. And then you butter your toast, and then you sprinkle that on it. Mm, mm, mm. So delicious. Okay? And... This is, this is a concentration of mass over mass. Okay, so anytime you see these tricksters, okay, we're all going back to the same thing here. We're all going back to a concentration. It's still looking at a concentration. It's just a different way of expressing that concentration. And what they can do to trick you up is this involves, every time you see a percentage, it involves an extra step, okay? Because your final volume of that concentration is going to be over 100 grams or 100 milliliters. And we know that if we have grams per liter of concentration... If I'm given something as 100 milliliters, I'm going to have to bring that to liters, right? By dividing it by 1,000. Do you remember that? So that'll usually give you, if we go back here to my, you know, percent volume over volume. If I ask you to dilute rubbing alcohol, and actually if you look at a bottle of rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. It usually says 70% volume over volume. What that actually means is it's diluted. It's 70 milliliters of pure alcohol mixed with 30 milliliters of water to give you that final volume of 100 milliliters. Okay, so it's got a concentration of 70 uh, I think 700 milliliters per liter. Okay, if you're looking at 70% volume over volume, 70% of that 100 is going to be your solute, and the other remainder to get to 100 
is your solvent. Okay?